All right, I was just thinking about this subject and I was watching YouTube this morning and I saw some very interesting videos on painting. And I've found, I mean, over the years when I've gone to paint stores and I've talked to guys um, or I've worked in shops and they were switching painters or maybe you were a helper at a shop and the new painter came in, he had other ideas and, you know, and I found to be a lot of misleading information. I'm not going to say it doesn't work. It's just that people get like caught in a way of doing things where they're doing everything one way because, you know, what they're trying to do is they're trying to take painting and they're trying to make it into a cookie cutter. Okay. So that you just go and you do the exact same thing every time and you stamp a cookie and it comes out the same every time. And I found over all the years of doing this stuff, I'm, I don't do it professionally anymore as an auto painter, but I am in the painting business and I see the same things in the regular painting businesses. I see, in, you know, in the house and building in trades and, and signs, I see the same type of thing happening even there. And it's like everybody's trying to find this cookie cutting method of doing painting. And so they come up with these theories and things like that of why things happen. And a lot of them I find to just be misleading. And I'm not going to say they're false because for them, they're not false. Maybe they do work, you know, because uh, of some of the things. So we're going to talk about some of those things in this video and just tell you guys some of the things that I saw that I just didn't agree with. Um, and I'm going to tell you why. And, and, and the, I'm going to tell you this because I really want you to think about what you're doing and try to incorporate ideas that and reasons why you do things so that you can figure out things. Because one of the things I found in people in painting is they can't figure out how to fix something because they didn't know why it happened. So anyway, we're going to talk about a few things. Maybe this will help. Even the people who do those things or don't do those things, maybe you'll still do it the same way when you're done, but you might learn something. And then even the guys who work for me in my paint, regular uh, house and building and trades building uh, business have learned a lot over the years from me about painting because I, you know, I know why things happen. You know, I know why I got some, a lot of problems in this paint job on this thing. And it's because number one, it was, it was 120 degree panel when I painted it. So, uh, there's places where it was dry and places where it wasn't dry when I put my next coat on and, uh, it was too dry in one area and not dry enough in another area so I'd get a run and I'd get orange peel and that sort of thing happens and you know and it just depends on how you want to fix it I could go through and just sand it down and clear the whole thing again or I could just leave it there and just sand down and buff it I kind of was at that point where I thought you know what I think I'm just gonna rather put the extra effort in of buffing it and uh, do it that way so it's all up to you. And it could be easier sometimes to just sand down and shoot another coat of clear, depending on where you're at. For me, it was easier because I had to take my whole spray booth out and set it up and do it again. And I think I'd end up with the same issue because of the heat. So one of the guys I watched, you know, a long time ago, he says that if you mix up your clear in a bucket like this, one of the clear buckets like this one, I don't have any that are clean. But you know what I'm talking about, where it's clear, you can see all the way through it. He says that if you mix up your clear and it dries, and it's not perfectly clear all the way through, and, you know, that you can end up with a color match issue. And I remember years ago, going into our shop and, and having a car that didn't match from the clear, and it wasn't actually the clear's problem. Let's talk about it for a minute. So again, I was talking from with Tammy from Tamco, one of the most brilliant paint people in the business, Tamco Paint. If you want to just check them out, they have great material and very knowledgeable people there. Tammy is amazing. I think her dad was in the business and she's been doing it basically her whole life too. So, and she totally agreed with that one. She was like, oh no, no, that is false. That is absolutely false. And let me tell you what I ran into, and this is what probably somebody else has ran into, and they thought that it was actually the clear that was the problem. 
you have when you're putting on clear you're talking about you know uh you know two to three mil thickness which is not a millimeter it's actually a paint mill which is different than a millimeter you need to get a little bit you can look that up or whatever paint mills and then uh you know it's a very very thin layer of clear so when you're looking at it through you know and it's going through a half inch of it or an inch or it goes through a whole container like that you're looking at it through you know such a amount of area that you know when it's not completely clear all the way through that it's not going to really make that much difference when it's on the panel because it's very very thin it's such a thin layer that it can't really change it unless it's unless you've got paint in the clear or something like that something crazy like that like if you add pearl to it or something or you had like paint in your in your line or something on your in your in your spray gun you didn't clean it out properly and you like had a little pink in it or something like that then maybe you could see that if you were painting white of course you know but what i ran into is we did um a car and uh uh uh, uh, and it was a BMW years ago and we painted the, the two doors we cleared the two doors and we sprayed and spot sprayed a spot like right here sprayed and blend the doors cleared the whole doors across and when we got it out of the booth took it out in the sun it was like holy crap this looked like a different color here and we didn't even do anything but put clear here in here and uh, we kind of looked at it and went oh man what happened so instead of going back and going the clear was bad, you know, or something like that, we thought, well, let's just polish it and take a look at it. So we went through, sanded, cut and polished the whole door, the door set, and then polished a little bit of the panel with the same polish. And of course, when we got all done, it was completely 100% matched. You could not see anything. It was actually the, uh, the clear... This was almost shinier than the original paint because, um, I don't know, the clear, when it's before it's been polished, looks different. And that's where guys go, you know, like black. They say, well, black didn't match. Well, most of the time, black is black is black. We used to use years ago, and it was mostly the polishing. So you could use a different black here than here, and if it was more polished, it'd look less black and more black. And, you know, it was just like, Polishing was the biggest thing in the in the blacks to get them to match. So the same thing on the panels we found is that it was actually the uh, the it was actually the polishing that the smoothness of the finish that made it look like it was a different color. And it was because when you look at it at an angle, it was like a sheen. You look at it at this angle here, and you would see the the difference in sheen and that would fool you into thinking it was color issue and it wasn't color it was actually all sheen so it was how smooth the finish was and it was the fine marks from polishing the little tiny stuff that you could see made it look different in color so if that's the kind of problem you're having then that might be something to look into it's probably not the clear um, never seen a clear not make a paint match Maybe on a, pure, I don't even think on a pure white, unless you had something in your gun that was mix, mixed into it. Another thing I saw, as uh, you know, the other day, I was watching a guy, and he says you have to break when you change, you, you, when you when you uh, stop your your spray. So usually, what most people do is they spray a panel and they stop here, spray, spray, and stop uh, at the marks. He says you have to stop in the middle of a panel says you have to stop in the middle of the panel because if you don't do that then you end up with some I don't forget what he called it some mark or something um, and <laughs> I've I, honestly I've never seen that ever in my whole life you know I painted like I said BMW's Mercedes Rolls Royce all kinds of like that when I was really young and I painted custom custom paint you know stuff flames graphics all that stuff never saw anything like this so we've always painted to the line and why do you do that is because you know where you stopped um, the thing is is you know on a long panel like the other side like over here it's so long it's kind of hard to re you know you don't you know in place I was painting uh, it's I was kind of close to here so trying to walk the whole panel was really hard so I couldn't do it because uh, you trip and things like that walking back and forth because it's really narrow the area I was in so 
not like a regular spray booth. So, um, you know, it's a little hard to find where you stopped. And if you have a problem finding out where you stopped, your lap is going to be an issue. You know, like if you put too much, you know, if you overlap too much over your last coat of clear, and you're probably going to get a run. If you, you know, shoot up to not far enough into it, you're probably going to get um, a dry spot. So I'm not saying that that didn't work for him. I mean, I'm saying the guy does nice work or whatever, but I'm just saying what I did is I watched him spray and I saw that he turns his gun like this. Okay. When you spray, you should be spraying exactly straight at the material. You see my hand stays straight like this, like that. You should be spraying straight at where you're spraying. If your hand's breaking like that, what happens is overspray bounces off and ends up on further down the panel and what you'll have is when you go to spray back into that you'll have a little bit heavier area or whatever and when you spray you have your hand on the trigger you pull and as soon as you your stop area so look when i do it i can stop right at the line boom i i go off of the into just the air i go from this paint to air and i go past it paint right at the line right at the line. So I know right where I'm doing it. It's easier for me to know. So if you do it that way, that's up to you. Like I said, you can do it in the middle of the panel if you want, but it's to me it's harder when you're in the middle of the panel to remember when you're in exactly the same place because the middle of the panel doesn't have any kind of line for you to reference to let off your trigger. So what happens is you'll have odd overlap. And I don't know what he's talking about about that fatty. If you see what he's talking about or you know whose channel it is, I'm not going to say, just go ahead and put a comment down there. I'll give you the love if you get the right one. Be fun to find out some of these things. Another thing I saw what was kind of interesting is a guy says, you have to finish sanding with 320 grit in order to get for the primer not to show the sanding scratches. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what does anybody get that one what <laughs> okay i i i prime over 150 and i use tamco's primer and i don't get a sanding scratch in my finish in fact i finish sanded this thing here with 220 which is a little rough okay 320 is a little bit better for if you're doing a thing if you're going to color sand it buff it it doesn't really matter that much you can go with 220 and and you can sand out the scratches. It just depends on if you use the sealer. I use the sealer. So um, it does, the sealer does fill quite a bit. And yeah, I do have orange peel in here. And yes, I know. I, I sprayed this in 120, 120 degrees. This panel was 120 degrees when I painted it. So normally I wouldn't have that much orange peel in it. So, but it's easy. I'll just sand that out, make it look great. No problem. But, uh, you know, it just, depends on the issues you're having and what time and you have to try and figure out what's happening why it's happening and some guys get these weird theories of of i think they're weird you know that, that they say that happens the same guy i was watching him he says he had this really hood with a lot of orange peel that somebody else painted and he was repainting it and he was block sanding a hood that was made of fiberglass with a long board with one you know a 12 foot 12 inch long board and every time he pushed on this sanding block the hood would warp like this and i'm like dude that's like counterproductive you, you, you know if i were sanding that hood i would just sand it with a da and i would get it just fine you know and guys go well, this is the other thing i see guys say you cannot do good work if you use a da you can't do a really smooth finish and get no waves in it with a da well, I found that to be completely false again. It's all in the person behind the DA. Okay, when when I was working at those shops, we did everything with the DA, and then even our hand, even our blocking, and then we go through with a four inch block afterwards, and we do our final sanding, and we got stuff absolutely perfect. You know, you're working on BMWs, Mercedes, it better be right. People are going to come back. Um, I remember back years ago, I had a line on a DA on, on, on a on a on a uh, BMW that was like this, you know, the old 325s and 318i. They had like a line that came down. It was a hard edge right here, and then it would dip in and go down. Okay, 
And so the other guy had painted it. I was in the shop painting, you know, catching up all the work because they had fired the other painter. And I was over there just kind of working at their shop. And I was, and I, and the new painter was coming. Okay. And I was just kind of helping him out because I was from another shop. I just kind of was kind of catching up their work because all our work was all cut up at our shop. So I just went over there and I was sanding this flat edge and the new painter comes in and he says, there's no way that that's going to look good because you finished it out with the DA. And I go, you want to bet? And he goes, oh yeah, I, I bet you, I know it's better. It's not going to be, you can't paint like that. Blah, blah, blah. Of course, guess what? He got fired a couple of days later. It was funny. But I go and I and, and I and I sanded this whole thing down. I did the whole thing with the DA. I did the rest of it with a hand block, just with a just with a little four inch block. And I just rough. I just spent about three minutes with the hand block. I spent about twenty minutes with the DA, resanding the edge, and uh, put it in the booth. And he goes, "I'm not painting it. I'm not going to paint it. It's going to look like crap." Blah blah blah. I go, "Okay, I'll paint it." So I went in the booth, sprayed it out, pulled it out of the booth. He goes, "I said, does it look like crap?" And he kind of goes, oh, that turned out pretty good. I go, yeah, okay, so next time when I do something, it's right, okay? A couple days, you know, it was like a week later he got fired. But I'm just saying, it doesn't have to be done by hand for it to be perfect. You can use machines. You can learn how to be good with that DA and learn how to do a nice job. It's just, it's all up to you. And so a lot of people watch some of the stuff on YouTube and it's not the gunman. I'm going to tell you right now. If you want to watch a really good spray guy, um I've never seen him do anything that's out of line with the best guys there are, really, you know. And and he might even say, you know, and he's probably not going to say some of the things he's going to he'll do because he's got customers watching his channel. So He's got to be careful on what he says and what he doesn't say. So he may not say some of the stuff I'm telling you because I have no customers. I'm not interested in doing people's work. I would not take a paint job from somebody on their car for the, for my life. There's no way I would do it. I just don't want to deal with people for that because I got sick. That's the reason. One of the reasons I got out of the business, I just was like, you know what? People are so ungrateful. I don't care. I don't want to, you know, they would always talk to you when there's a problem. They never want to talk to you when it looked great. Never. I always want to talk to you. Oh, come on, I want to talk to the painter. There's one little thing right here in my paint. What's that? You repaint the whole hood over some stupid thing. The guy gets it home, never looks at it again. You know, that stuff just got to me. I just was like, forget it. I don't want to do this. So I'd rather do my own, play around with my own cars. So, so anyway, there's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube. You're going to watch and you're going to see, you know, like other guys go, you can't lap weld uh, and do good body work. It's like, dude, I've been doing it that way my whole life. That's the way we always did it back in the 80s and 90s. And stuff was always accepted by the customer. It's just people do it different now because of different reasons. Another thing that I've seen is Bondo always cracks. Say Bondo can crack if it's done wrong and uh you know uh, if you use a good filler like this one here this one here has good panel flexibility if your panel has a bit of movement it it, it has less resistance to cracking um it has sand super easy you know uh it sticks to you know all different types of things it can be six to sanded original paint it sticks to like sanded primers um, it sticks to wood, okay? It, it it's, it's all in their specification sheet. It's not just, this isn't just stuff I'm just telling you. This is stuff that I've gotten right from their spec sheet. Other guy says, I, I, I always use lead because it doesn't crack. I've actually seen cracked lead. <laughs> so anything, if it's done wrong, it's going to be it, it, it's not going to last. It's going to have problems, you know, and sometimes, you know, you'll do everything wrong and it'll last. And sometimes you'll do everything right and you have issues. You know, when, when my friend was doing spec work for like a big company, like he was doing like wings and he was sending them to this company and they were putting them, you know, they, they had a spec sheet on how it was done. I mean, literally to get everything to make it actually meet the adhesion 
tests and all these other things, you literally had to have do it exactly, exactly. You know, drying time, uh, recoat times, all that stuff, and the temperature it was sprayed in, all that stuff had to be exactly right. And if the temperature was a little off, he would have issues and he took it, he could take a wing in. They'd, they'd go, okay, we'll do a sample test on this. He'd do a sample test and, oh, adhesion didn't fail, you know. And, and they would, they were really crazy about it. You know, they put these little pieces of tape on there and they, you know, and he just ripped the thing off, really put little cuts in it. And they would just rip the thing off and any little, one little square didn't last. They would, um, you know, like putting duct tape on your work and then just ripping it off as fast as you can. And, uh, and it make sure that it adhered properly. You know, that's the way they test that stuff. So he would, you know, he did all those things, you know, and he finally figured out that once he did it exactly at the proper temperature, exactly as, you know, drying time, exactly right. The primer drying time, exactly right. The sealer drying time, exactly right. The, everything exactly as, as the book said, the material mixed exactly as it was said, you know, whatever it says, you know, you know, you wouldn't over reduce it, wouldn't under reduce it. It would, it passed everything past adhesion test. Everything would be right. So it's very, very critical. And you know, when you're, and, and the problem is, is when you're painting stuff, it's not always the same. And what I'm trying to get to is nothing when you're doing paint is cookie cutter. There's no one specific thing that you can do every time that's going to get you the same results because you're going to have things like, you know, when I was painting this 120 degree panel temperature, what am I going to do? Well, I could wait for another day. You know, like, well, I had time to do it that day. So I didn't want to do that. You know, um, I had all my stuff all set up, you know, I could, you could, you might have another time where it's, you know, too cold. We can do wait for summer, you know, um, you know, and when you have a paint booth, you can set those temperatures up right, you know, all the time and you can have it consistent. But you guys DIY at home, you're watching these paint channels and these guys are showing stuff that they're working in a shop and it may not be the same as you working at home. And the reason, like I said, the reason I'm making this video is to help you watch those channels and learn the proper things. Because you might be watching them and you see one way, oh, I agree with his way, but this other guy, you know, his way isn't right. The uh, and, and both of them might be right. It just depends on temperature, depends on, you know, material, depends on, you know, like, like for instance, clear coat. You can spray clear coat. The guy says, how to spray clear coat without any orange peel. And one guy's got one way to do it. Another guy's got another way to do it. Well, it might be the material differences they're used. So, you know, when I talked about that in my video, um, I was talking about one particular material. I was talking about DIY at home. And other guys commented all over the thing. Oh, my God. You know, you, use all, you always use full pressure with clear. Blah, blah, blah. The guns are all set up for that. No S word. I know that. Okay. I'm talking to people who work on their stuff at home, not guys who are working in the shop. So, you know, it, it got kind of out of control with the weird comments on that. So anyway, those are just a few things I'm just trying to give you guys. Do not look at everything like it's a cookie cutter. Don't look at everything like you're stamping cookies and you're doing everything exactly the same. You have to use your brain whenever you're doing painting. Uh, you have to think about what's going on and you know, how to compensate for something and some things you may not be able to compensate for and you just have to deal with it. So anyway, just a couple of false things I saw are not really false. They're just differences of opinion. I don't know. Like I said, the guy who said that I could not spray that line and it was going to look bad on that BMW. He was right for him, but for me, I was right. You know, it's just all up to you and your skills and what you can learn and what you can do, what you can't do. Talk to you in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.